Hello, and welcome to the first of many modules as an introduction to product testing. We start with the beginning. Product development does not start with testing. However, it is equally true that testing does not start when we get the product in our hands for the first time. Learning the organization's objectives with the project and the scope is fundamental to successful product testing. The scope will come from those referred to as stakeholders. In this module, we will discuss scope and those people and processes that surround uncovering and managing the scope. This is not a product development or project management class. However, all these pieces of the puzzle are connected and having a working knowledge of these interfaces is important for effective test management. To that end, this module will discuss stakeholders, stakeholder management, change management, and scope. Of these four things, the least important perhaps is stakeholder management as it often falls to the project manager. However, the test personnel and test managers in particular will have it to manage the expectations of the stakeholders and even prioritize which stakeholders have the strongest or most relevant input. Not all stakeholders value all things, and some are in fact more important than others. Stakeholders come in many guises. There are people who have an investment, personal or monetary, in the project outcome. That is, they generally have some skin in the game. A special type of stakeholder is the sponsor the one paying for the work. Certainly good input can come from everywhere. From everywhere. However, the person paying for the work has some priority. A stakeholder can be internal to the company or an external position. Some may appear to be stakeholders, but upon careful review are perhaps well-meaning bystanders or worse. As we have stated already, many of these stakeholder issues will be under the auspices of the project manager. However, there is no doubt that these interfaces, shared boundaries and inputs, suggestions, comments, advice, directives, and instructions will come to have an impact on the test planning, testing, and fault reporting. When it comes to assessing competing stakeholder demands, it is, it is possible to use a resource allocation matrix to identify the stakeholder's area of input. This will help clarify whose voice should carry the most weight per specific topic or requirement. Consider the following scenario. There's a project to make the current product meet some regulatory requirement. The interpretation of the regulation belongs to a specific organization or individual within the company. The cost for the product will fall in a multitude of purviews. The sponsor probably has concerns funding the project, involving purchasing and procurement department and the project management departments. There may be technical engineering aspects of the design for the product development staff to work on to meet the regulatory targets. A good idea may come from anywhere. However, the person responsible for the interpretation of the legal statute is not a purchasing buyer or a purchasing clerk. Hence, the purchasing department's commentary on the topic is out of their scope. The advice may be helpful. It could be a good idea, but it is not their area of responsibility. Experience indicates these sorts of tussles often impact the amount of testing time available. While these squabbles stall a project for a decision, the time ticks down on the work to be performed. All that are associated with a project are stakeholders. This includes the project participants. The further we move away from the project and the expected results of the project, the more distant the influence. Society at large is also a stakeholder for the project results, as the results will likely move throughout society. This also includes the governmental entities from that perspective of regulation. The pinnacle stakeholder is the person spending the money for the project and is often referred to as the sponsor. This may be one or a collection of key stakeholders that are funding the project with some expected outcome tied to business opportunities. This stakeholder documentation is largely a function of the project management activities. However, every organization is different and set different expectations upon their project managers and line functions. If nobody is filling this role of identifying the stakeholders, it is incumbent upon the test manager to know the stakeholders that will have the greatest impact upon the testing portion of the project, manage the expectations, and controlling the situation. The scope of the project is a result of these sundry areas of expertise. 
the scope documents and business objectives, product objectives, and costs and quality targets. Ultimately, these will end up generating requirements and constraints for the product, if all goes according to the process from which the product will be formally developed. Requirements are the functional and technical details of the product. Constraints will be the things likely expected, quality, cost for the product and the development, and the expected delivery date. When we consider the cost, there is that cost in order to design, test, and deliver the product to manufacturing, and which is a function of the project, and the cost of the product alone, generally calculated from three components, factory overhead, labor, and materials. Quality has many dimensions, and testing, among other key activities, has a key role in help meeting these objectives. As you will see, meaningful testing requires more than simply testing to the requirements, although that approach forever remains a baseline. Delivery dates, ideally, will be for specific iterations as we incrementally develop and test the product. Ultimately, we include all of the features expected in the scope document, and we will produce the product for the consumer. The delivery date is often another hard point, as this date is often fixed and the development work is sadly not, meaning late development delivery and schedule rescue ends up belonging to the test and verification personnel. Stakeholders will have input all along the development process as they learn more about the product. The learning does not stop with the project sponsors, but also extends to those doing the technical work of developing the product. This also includes the potential customers or clients of the organization. Change is going to happen. Our wording of requirements will change, and we must find ways to manage this change. We will discuss that further in a later module on configuration management. We have discussed stakeholders and how they can originate from anywhere inside and outside the project and the organization. We have discussed what happens when we do not know the true stakeholders or have competing stakeholder voices. We have discussed a connection between stakeholders and scope, and we provide a brief description of scope. The next module will delve more deeply into the scope requirements and change management. This point is where testing seriously becomes involved in the product development process.